this bit. Sky News, Florida. Uh, let's get a rundown of what else is happening. Charlotte, with those details, what have you got? Eamon, thank you. Good morning. An official government report is calling for drink driving limit to be cut by half. A report by the Transport Secretary will suggest that reducing the existing nine this morning. Are you doing live desk this it morning? It is. I'll be breaking the news of those figures. You'll be bringing those. At least you're not one of those statistics, <laughs> which is good. Not for not the yet. moment. Thanks. Uh, anyway, maybe at 10 o'clock it may all change. <laughs> but how it goes. Then how it yeah. goes. Uh, front page is the papers. Let's look at those. Uh, most of them. Sky News Sunrise on, uh, what day is it, Wednesday? It is, it's Wednesday. I knew that, I was just testing you all. Uh, it's John Gaunt, Newspaper Day, Wakey Wakey Rise and Shine. Uh, he's going to be here very shortly with those. And you're a Vuvuzela fan. How's nothing wrong with that, Eamon? A bit of uh, African culture, we should all get into it. What do you mean? It's going to be in the Premier League next year. What's, what's that got to do with I us? I didn't say I wanted it over here. Right, well, it's a bit of good African okay. culture over there. We're enjoying it. Let's get into the spirit of Africa. Wasn't the opening ceremony great? Much better than that regimented... Mm. totalitarian Chinese state okay. affair. Brilliant. Get more with more it, of this man. to come. More of this to come hey. in just over five minutes' time. Uh, we begin with President Obama, who made an address to the nation uh, last night in America. He's vowed to make BP pay for this oil spill. Uh, it's this bit Sky News, Florida. OK, newspapers coming your way with Mr John Gaunt after Charlotte with a rundown of the other news stories. Thanks, Eamon. An official government report is calling for drink driving limit to be cut by half. A report for the Transport Secretary will suggest reducing the existing legal months. OK, let's go through the newspapers now. John Gaunt's here and um, it's the day after the, uh, the Bloody Sunday uh, report and, and it's, the, it's the cost uh, and the bill racked up by lawyers that's grabbed your attention in the mail. Yeah, in best part of 200 million, of course, 190 million pounds, uh, Eamon, of course, good morning, by the way. Um, and uh, half of that cost has gone on these lawyers and the mail to give them the due this morning is sort of detailed how much money these uh, bewigged people have made out of it. I mean... Oh, clearly, we needed to get to the bottom of it. Whether we needed an inquiry that went on so long, I'm not sure. I certainly don't think the soldiers should be prosecuted. Uh, certainly when we have terrorists on both sides of the uh, so-called troubles now uh, sitting as MPs. Yeah, but nobody was a terrorist that day. No, oh. that's true. Uh, but uh, there's, even Savile says in the, thing that's, uh, in the report that certain uh, high-profile people were carrying guns on that day who are now in the government. I mean, you know, there is blame on both sides. I'm not excusing the paratroopers. They were clearly wrong on that day to shoot innocent people. However, what purpose would be served now by prosecuting those soldiers? What purpose has been so solved, served by it taking 12 years to sort this out at £200 million? It should have been done much quicker. The first report, of course, right back at the beginning, was a cover-up. That was a disgrace. This is a complete stain on, uh, on British history. Everyone would accept that. But a lot of people have made a lot of money yeah. out of other people's money. And it raises another question in everybody's day-to-day -day life, um, how they're held to ransom by lawyers. Yeah. If you take out an overdraft at the bank, you've got to go and see a lawyer. Yeah. Um, if, if you're defamed, you've got to go and see a lawyer. If you move house, you've got to go yeah. and see a lawyer. And, and, um, and actually, well, what you don't want to go and see is a lawyer in London, who's no. about four times That's more true. expensive than lawyers anywhere else. And also, when you look at how much money they made, I mean, 4.48 million, Christopher Clark, you see, made. Uh, Bill Rowe, June a junior council made 2.2 million. Sir Alan Green, I don't know if you remember him, he was the disgraced former director of public prosecutions found with prostitutes in King's Cross. His wife then committed suicide. He ended up becoming senior counsel of the armed forces. He's done all right out of it after 20 years. 1.52 million. You know, yeah. it just seems an awful lot of money. It's taken too long and one has got... I mean, for the family, all the families, you've got to say, yes, they've mm. got justice at last. Lawyers However, in general, should we be long. reforming how yeah. they are allowed to bill and uh, mm. how they monopolise um, things? Let us know your views, newsofsky.com. Um, now, this was a story. This is a, a, a mum who's teaching her seven-year-old daughter how to, to pole dance. Yeah. Um, she says it doesn't reflect on her parenting skills. No, that's right. And uh, Sarah Brugge, her name is from St Neots in Cambridge. She says, there's a picture of here, only hypocrites criticise my parenting. The men sneak off the lap dancing clubs behind their wives' backs and I intimidate fat, ugly women. 
Well, love, you're not fat, that's for sure. <laughs> whether you're beautiful is another question. I mean, this woman's had half a million pounds worth of plastic surgery. What, what is she teaching her child? A little child, five or six, seven years old, teaching her how to lap dance and pole dance. She is a disgrace. It's right the son have exposed her. Uh, there's no way she can justify this. We're all for kids getting fit, but this isn't the way to do it. But I love the way she's got an inflated view of her own looks, because as far as I'm concerned, She's pig ugly. I'm sorry. <laughs> well, no, uh, the beauty is in the eye of the beholder. Well, that's true. As, Don't you can say. As you say. You think ugly. she's good looking? Yes, she well, is. Well, you yeah. think she's good looking? It's all subjective. It's all subjective. So they're each to their own. Uh, no, uh, speeding. <laughs> speeding. <laughs> and, and getting and, uh, and, uh, getting off with it okay. in the time. This is Mr. Loophole, Nick Freeman. The, he's, uh, a, he's a famous lawyer as he well. He's a famous lawyer. He gets people off. He's the one who famously... Uh, we had um, uh, Mr. Ferguson. Uh, the manager of Manchester United, who had... Uh, He's been he had bowel problems. He had diarrhoea, yeah. yes. He yeah. had to go up the hard shoulder at high yes. speed. I'm sure it's true. Anyway, golfer beats ban over a random speed gun. This is Monty, Colin Montgomery. It's a great story, this. Uh, he got done for doing 37 in a 30. Anyway, it came out that the civilian who was in charge of the gun that day had become trigger-happy. His name's Mr Griffin. He was questioned in court, this is the guy who's operated the gun, about a jugger, jogger whom he'd recorded at six miles an hour. Mr Griffin replied, Sometimes your mind goes numb. He was basically instructed to point the gun at everybody. Anything that moved. Yeah. Now, clearly, if we want moves. to stop people speeding in 30 mile yeah. an hour limits. And if Monty had been doing that, that's wrong. 100 people now, because of this person, are going to actually get off. Uh, but the, the principle is, you don't want to target everybody, do you? Target the people who are breaking the law. In the areas that are, yeah. that are particularly sensitive, Crazy. like outside schools and things ah. like that. Um, Yes, because if you drive to work the time we do on empty roads at this time of the morning with no pedestrians, what are all those police out there with their guns for at this yeah. time of the well, morning? Well, also as well, I mean, I came down the M40 today, mm -hmm. the speed limit's 70 miles an hour, of course I kept to it. But how ludicrous is that? It's completely empty, at this time a of the dry morning, yeah. day, you should have no speed limit on motorways. Uh, we need to have, certainly to have variable speed mm -hmm. limits. We also need a, a blanket ban on Vuvuzelas, oh. um, of course, as well. Learn to love your Vuvu, says Tutu. Yeah, this is Archbishop Tutu in the sun. He says uh, he's urged the world to embrace African culture and stop knocking fans' noisy vuvuzulas. Uh, the vuvuzula is part of our culture. We cannot separate them from the soccer fever. And I think the Archbishop is right. I think there's an awful lot of snobs looking down their snooty noses and they, they wanted to have a go at South Africa. First it was going to be security, then it was going to be logistics and all the Africans couldn't organise it. Well, unfortunately, they have. And they're doing a fantastic you know job what? and it's if a great you festival me, of if soccer. You and me were Adam, could you imagine this at Coventry in your Rico Stadium? Could you imagine it there? I couldn't imagine the Rico Stadium being full. <laughs> and also, secondly, uh, you, what do you mean, you and I? Our hearing's terrible. We probably wouldn't hear it. It'd be a distant yeah. hum in the background at our age. Well, no, what? I think it's great. It's part of the flavour of it. Come on, for goodness sake. And some people are saying you can't hear the radio commentators. Well, certain radio stations aren't even in the studio. Yes, uh, do you know what the problem the stadium, there is? Medium wave. If they're on medium wave, you can't hear them okay. anyway. So well, there some we go. people would say that's an advantage with certain commentators. Okay. But there we are. Thank you. You like the horn, Charlotte, don't you? You like <laughs> well, it? Well, I think you get used to it, that's the thing. Yes. That's okay. good, isn't it? It's part of the atmosphere. Oh, we agree. <laughs> we Thank you. Oh, dear. <laughs> John's it's back in an hour's time. Um, say hello to him uh, at Eamon Holmes at Sky Charlotte and news at sky.com. David Cameron's going to go to his first European summit in Brussels tomorrow. He's facing a frosty reception from some there. Alex Rossi assesses uh, what. Right, talking about wild targets, um, the goals <laughs> and all that sort of thing. Let's not hope that they are wild targets in the next one. Uh, Capello, though, coming in for a bit of stick in the paper today, uh, because he's going to be against the Australian Barbarians. OK, I'm going to do a straw poll. Uh, headline Daily Express today, Lucy, talking about the weather, and it says Britain's, it's been Britain's driest start to a year for almost half a century. Has anyone else noticed that? No. No. <laughs> it doesn't feel like that at all. No. When did it stop raining? <laughs> well, this is basically hasn't rained all year. Well, there must be something going on wrong around my neighbourhood. What, what way? What Slightly do you think? Slightly misleading, maybe. It, it's true to a certain extent if you're looking at facts and figures. And we have had the driest May for 12 years, I think, since 1998. So that's a big chunk, really. Where in Ethiopia? <laughs> something. It's, um, it's, been, so it's been raining everywhere all over Britain. There were nice days. I May, guess though. we're just used to it being wetter. I know it's just all relative. But yeah. um, we had the driest May for 18. Uh, sorry. 
since 1998. But we also uh, were about average as far as temperature is concerned. Globally, it was the warmest May on record or something. But okay. we were I, far from that. I take it all back. <laughs> We'll take a break there. Top stories of the morning. President Obama's been speaking overnight about BP. Hear what he's had to say after this. Nisbet, Sky News, Florida. Uh, results from the city from Sainsbury's. Going to be talking to their chief executive, Justin King. And we've got the front pages of the papers. All to come uh, after this news rundown from Charlotte. Thanks very much, Eamon. And yes, we start with some breaking news actually concerning those latest figures from Sainsbury's. The like for like sales are out and they are up 1.1% for the first three months of this year. Uh, that's the breaking news concerning Sainsbury's latest figures. Like for like sales up 1.1% for the first three months of this year. And as Eamon said, we'll be speaking to the Chief Executive Justin King in just a few minutes about those. An official government report is calling for tough new limits on the legal alcohol limit. A report for the Transport Secretary will suggest cutting the existing legal li level to the same amount as students. Uh, we'll look at the front pages of the papers now. Let's flick through those and uh, a lot of them.